This is the plaintiff, Tyler. He says he contracted with the defendant to use his event space for a birthday party. And six days before the event, he told him he booked the space with someone else, leaving him high and dry. He had 250 people coming from all over the place. He was forced to find a much smaller place at the last minute. And it's just not right what they did to him. He's suing for $1,539.42. The amount is out. This is the defendant, Brandon. He says the plaintiff asked to have an event in his new party space and paid nothing. The only thing he guaranteed was he'd bring in at least 2,500 bucks at the bar. Subsequently, someone else offered to pay to rent his entire building for a huge event. And when he tried to reschedule with the plaintiff, he decided to move his party to another establishment. Bottom line, he had no contract with the plaintiff. He's sorry about what happened, but certainly doesn't owe him a dime. He's accused of being a party pooper. All parties, raise your right hands, please. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff contracted with the defendant to rent out space for a birthday party. 250 people were invited. Six days before, the guy calls and says, look, I'm gonna rent the space to somebody else. But the defendant says the plaintiff never sealed the deal. It's the case of unhappy birthday. Thank you, Douglas. Okay. Tyler, you are suing Brandon's, um, it's not even your business, but you have authority to be here, um, their venue, the venue Brandon works for, for $1,539.32 that you say you are out as a result of them breaching a contract to offer you the space for a certain day. Yes. What happened? So I celebrated a milestone birthday earlier this year. Which milestone? Uh, I turned 25. Okay. So I wanted to uh, celebrate with a birthday event. Um, and uh, I reached out to the defendant um, on February 24th uh, regarding having a event at their uh, venue. And we were in talks for a couple of weeks and we reached an agreement on March 7th. And the agreement was I could have the space um, with the capacity of 250, excuse me, 250 people. And How many people were you planning on having? Initially uh, 75 um, just because of, of cost. Um, but with that, with the opportunity to have more people, I definitely wanted to take that. Um, and the requirement would be for me to reach a bar minimum of $2,500, okay. um, which I feel like could definitely be achieved with a capacity of 250 people. And then, people. so if, if, uh, you, if they only sold 1000 something, then you would have to pay the difference? Correct. So that was your agreement, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And did you have it in writing? Yes, I had an email exchange. Can where I we, see the email agreed. exchange? Yes. So what happens? The event was going to be what day? It was going to be March 25th. So that, that was March 7th yep. w when we reached the agreement. Um, so at that point, I started inviting people. I had guests coming from out of town, so people were booking flights um, to come to the event. I booked DJs. I was reaching out to a uh, photographer. And so I was really putting everything in motion for the event. And uh, one of the DJs asked about the uh, tech specifications at the venue. So I reached out to the venue to get information on the tech um, at the space, and they told me that they would be unable to accommodate me What they on say? The, on the date that we agreed to. Um, they said that they booked another venue, I mean, I'm sorry, they booked another event, and that they would be using the entire space. And it wasn't a situation where they reached out to me to tell me this. Yeah, you just found out by I reached, accident. I reached out uh, what to them. How soon before your party did you it find- It was eight, eight days before the event. Eight days before the event. So what happened? Uh, so the events leading up, as the plaintiff described, are pretty accurate. Um, when uh, the plaintiff reached out to us to um, confirm tech specs, we had just found out that day um, that our upstairs show that we were having in the venue the same night as his party got canceled. Um, and we're a large venue space, so um, we needed another event in there to justify turning our lights on, turning our AC on, and to make money that day, a Friday night. Um, so we were looking for other events to find, and uh, we were reached out uh, to by a company um, that was going to throw a party for 800 to 900 people um, to rent out our full event. And you know, as a young business, uh, we just couldn't pass up an opportunity like this. Um, and so you I, breached your contract with him? Um, well, we didn't have any contract signed. It was an email agreement. Um, the most we said was, uh, as, far as, as far as confirming the date was, cool, that works. So by saying cool, that works, is that a binding contract? No, but, no, no. Why? He should have yeah. uh, reconfirmed that. The well, but why is cool, that works not enough? 
Because that's not the uh, right choice. You need to have signed. Who disagrees? The reason why it's an implied contract. When you sit down in a restaurant, you don't sign a paper saying that you're going to pay the bill, do you? It's an implied contract. You're okay, implied contract. <laughs> going inside the courtroom. How old are you? Uh, 23. Okay. I'm going to explain to you what a contract is. Offer and acceptance. That's a contract. I decide I want something from you, so I'm gonna give up something, and you decide you want the something I'm giving up. Mm. So, cool <laughs> works, and that's a contract. What did you get? You got the assurance and guarantee of $2,500 that night, and he got a venue. And then what happens is, you went to the highest bidder, which is, you know, you look at me and you say, well, we're a young business, we had to do it. That's great. But I expect you to compensate the man for his damages, and you didn't. You said, we don't owe him any money. And that's not great, because um, this is a contract. Sure. OK. Uh, I mean, now, how, uh, how much, uh, just to know what it, what's your price, how much uh, was this big, I mean, I imagine it was a huge deal. How much was, I don't want to know the name or who yeah, they are. The bar, the bar ring was significant that night. I mean, like it, what? Was like, it was probably close to uh, you know, $10,000 for 800, 900 people, I'd imagine. Right. Well, then you're flush with money and you can take over his losses. Now, what are your losses? You end up finding another place. Yes. And the place is smaller, but it's kind of the size you had wanted earlier, rather than having strangers at your birthday. Right. And uh, how'd the party go? The party went well. Good. So now you um, ended up having to shell out how much for that place? Uh, in total, it was uh, one thousand five hundred thirty-nine and thirty-two. What cents. about the bar, though? Who got the bar that night? We didn't even have a bar situation. The, the space didn't come with the bar, so I, in addition to that, I had to supply um, my. Did you charge for the liquor? I did not. Were so, you there? Who are you? I'm Step on up. Hi, I'm his friend. I was there at the party that night. Justice friend? Yes. But I was there at the party that night, and there was no liquor. No um, liquor? Even no, he said he, there was liquor. Yeah, but he asked us to bring your own bottles at oh, that point. Okay, so there was plenty of liquor. Yeah, just plenty wasn't of liquor, but it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Um, so he wants you to pay the 1200 for the rental space plus the security fee. He had to get insurance. Would he have had to get insurance with you? No. No, because you have your own insurance. And then he, $103 for life. I mean, he's not trying to make money off of you. He just feels like you broke your uh, rental agreement and that you should compensate him. Why isn't he right? Um, well, we tried to find other dates. We were... Uh, oh, yeah, no, wait, let's talk about that. Hold on. So when you talk to him, you tell him, can't do it that weekend, uh, pull the rug out from under you, how about next weekend, right? And you say... Sure. It was, it was the day before. Well, actually, so the event was supposed to be March 25th. They offered me March 24th. March 24th. I reluctantly agreed, and then they came back and said that they couldn't honor that day either. Ah, we can't so, do March 24th either. So that was the second time Dude, that they, you know. You're gonna want, it's like you're, you're throwing bad juju into the world. You don't want to do that when you start off a business? Sure, I mean, it's, right. it's venue conflicts. It's hard to nail it. No, it's not anything. hard. Do the right thing. What um, it is, is you're like, you remind me of what, my, I come from a construction family, and the construction family, people show up to the highest bidder. That's what they do. Mm. So I would have to make my house more attractive for them to show up. <laughs> so I would cook breakfast for everybody. I would bring coffee to all the workers. That way they come to my house first, because otherwise they're going to go where they're going to make money now. But that's business. That's capitalism. It's a beautiful thing. But... You can't keep the ball rolling if you don't do it with honor. And if you're not, you know, doing it with honor means complying with your obligations. But if you can't comply with your obligations because that 10 grand was just too juicy, for the love of God, at least do what the guy's asking, which is just make me whole. Make me whole. Give me my $1,500 because I had to go accommodate, go to a smaller place, change. I'm embarrassed. You buy it. You know, the whole routine. He's right because, yeah, cool, that works is a contract. Verdict for the plaintiff, $1,539.42. So the plaintiff does get his $1,539. Brandon and the defendants just come out of the courtroom. I I'm, I'm really want to know what you think about what the judge said to you when she said the word cool 
works. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, that's what I said uh, in the agreement, and uh, that's what we uh, decided on. But it doesn't seem like a very concrete agreement to me. Um, uh, but at, at the same time, I feel like the plaintiff was going to spend $2,500 at our venue. Seems like he got a break getting 1500 at the other. So why well, do that, we have to that's pay that? Not, that doesn't count in here. You know, that's the way it worked out for him. Bottom line is, though, you did agree. In, a, in the eyes of the law, you had a contract. So hopefully you've learned something. Thank you, have? I guess I have. I guess you have. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Pay the guy. <laughs> Tyler's on his way out of the courtroom. Well, good for you. You know, sorry you went through all of this. So, really, how was the party? Oh, it was a really good party. How, really how good? good? Party. I mean, I mean, really good. Besides the money that I had to spend, you know, yeah. on on the venue uh, yeah. when I thought that I was going to get a venue for you know twenty five hundred for the bar minimum. But besides that, it was really good. You think it was better the way it ended up rather than it would have been at his place? I think things happened for a reason, so I think it, it probably was for the best. Well, good enough. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank okay. you very much. Glad you won. Thank all you. right. Have a good good luck. Harvey, good lesson here. What do you think? Hey, there's no magic to contracts. You can write it on a napkin. Cool That Works is binding.